How to separate pattern images. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creative B and welcome to my channel where we show you how to make money online with KDP Low Content Books and Etsy with new training every week. So be sure to hit the big red subscribe button down below. So today I am actually going to show you how to separate some of these patterns to actually be making your own. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I had a comment from Fat Robin Books and I absolutely love that name. And she said, hi, Kerry, forgive me for posting this in the wrong place. I've recently downloaded a pattern pack from Vectezi and assumed they would come as separate images. I was so wrong so I was wondering if there's any ideas on how to separate them so I can use each one on its own. Thanks in advance. So when you go to Vectezi you get a lot of options. I've typed pattern in there. I'm on a free account. Remember if you're using a free account you need to give attribution inside your books or inside your principles somewhere that says you've used it unless you've got a pro account. So the problem with a lot of these pattern packs, they actually all come as one image and they also come with very low DPI. So I'm going to show you an example here. So this is actually the JPEG and I'm going to open it with the previewer and it actually comes, as you can see, like that. Well, really, it's a mock-up because you can actually see the shadows and things that they want in there. So if we go to show inspector, it actually shows the size of the whole image and it shows that it's only at 72 pixels per inch, which means it is actually made for screen. So what we do need is we either need the AI file or we need the SVG file. Now some of these from Vectezi only come with the EPS or JPEG or PNG so you would need to use a website like Convertio. I'll leave a link in the description for you and you can convert an image to an SVG or to an AI or to something that actually works. Now we're going to use Photop. Why? Because Photop is free. You can sign up for an account. You can log in with that account. So your environment settings will be synchronized across all your devices. If you don't, you don't need to log in. But the reason why it's a good idea to actually log in, I haven't logged in, is if you want to keep all your settings, like when you create patterns or create layouts or anything like that. But there's no need. You can save everything as you go and download it as well. So if I were you, if you were doing this step, I would actually log in and then you can be using images for your books your cat or your printables or backgrounds or whatever so here we are in photop and we need to either use a svg file or an ai file to do this and the reason being is because we can change the dpi without it being pixelated if we use the jbig and we went up to 300 dpi it would be pixelated and would not be what you want so first thing first is i'm going to go and open up that file so i'm going to go file open And I'm going to choose the SVG file here of these hearts. And then as you can see, all comes out in different layers. So if you take certain layers off, you can actually see that words and things disappear. So I'm just going to merge those two. Well, not merge them. I'm just going to take away the little drop down. So I know that I don't, I can't see them. Same with those, they've taken away. Now, the one I'm going to do is this one, and I'm going to show you what I want to do. So I need to actually find that. So I'm just going to close all these down. So it's just a bit easier to see what I'm doing. So if I take the eye off, I know it's not that one. No, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. And it's that one. So this is the one I'm going to work with. So now I know which one I'm going to work with. I now need to create a board. So I'm going to go File, New. Now I want to create a new board that is 2,000 pixels wide, 2,000 pixels high, and 300 dpi. And that makes it quite big. I could actually make it 12 inches, which is 3,600 pixels. So in fact, I might actually do that. And then you can reduce it down to any size you want. So 3,600, 3,600. In fact, I'm going to change that to 300 dpi. Now, when I click off, it changes that to something ridiculous. So I'll go 3, 6,000. Or I could have just gone here and gone inches, change that to 12, 
change that one to 12. And I also want to give it a name so I actually know what I'm doing. So new pattern image. And I'm going to change the background to transparent and click create. So this has created me a new background. Now what I want to do is I want to take this, what I've selected, over to the new background. Now there's two ways of doing it. I can click on it, make sure the layer is selected, and I can use this move tool and just drag it across. So you just do that and drag and it would take it straight over. So and then you have to bring it back here. So I'm not going to do that way. And another way is if you right click on here and you go duplicate into and then click on the drop down and now you can choose the board that you're going to go onto and click OK. And I can see it's done that because it's done a little star for me. Now this board is huge compared to what we've got. So I can click on here with the move tool, the transform controls are here. So I can just click on and off. And if they've not appeared, if you click on free transform or transform there, they'll appear, but make sure you're on the move tool. So I can do that. I can stretch it out from what I want. Now I've got some problems here that I want to get rid of and change. But first and foremost, I'm actually going to put that background, that green background across everything. So I'm going to go into the little drop down, click on the background, and I'm actually just going to stretch that out so that I can see it nicely. I might even stretch it out past the board. So I know it's well on there. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to this layer here. Oops. And I'm going to try and stretch this out a lot bigger so you can see what I'm doing. And if I click on the magnifying tool and make sure it's on the plus, it actually zooms in for me as well. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of this layer here and I need to get rid of these missing hearts here. But then I also need to save some of the hearts to copy in place. So I'm going to show you what I've done, what I do. So I click here, click down in the layers. Now I need to find the different ones. So again, I'm going to just zoom out so that I can actually see which one's selected. So to see what's selected, you need to make sure that you clicked on the move tool, then go back to layer and then select. So I want to get rid of that layer because it's cut in half and I want to get that other layer. So I need to think or figure out where it is. So is it around here somewhere? Yes, it's there. So now I've got rid of those two. Now I want to get rid of those hearts there. So it's only on the dark pink. So I need to find any dark pink layer. So I'm on that one. Now I need to open the layers and see which one's which. So that's that. That's that one there. And again. Yep. So that one's found. Go through. So I'll speed this up and then you can see what I've done. Okay, so we're back and I've got rid of all the ones that I want to get rid of. I'm going to resize this again so it actually fits everything. Oh, I've got two that I haven't got rid of. So again, let me just click here for the layers. Okay, so now I'm happy. Click back on my layer and then I'm just going to resize so I can get everything where I want. So it's going to go in that corner there. I'm happy with. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer. I right click in and duplicate, make sure the move tool's on, and I'm going to move across there as well. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer again, duplicate, and move across now. 
This is the tricky bit. I actually want it so that I can get rid of parts that aren't there anymore. I'm going to go back to this layer. Back to this one. As well. That, I'm going to get rid of that layer there completely. Delete. And I'm just going to make sure that these two actually fit. I want just to make it easier on myself. There we go. Now I'm going to make sure I select both of those layers and make sure that's on so that they are aligned. Now I've got this gap here, so I actually need a pink heart. I was going to say rose, so I need to click on one of these. Yes, I've got a pink heart there. So I'm actually going to duplicate that layer and then I'm going to move it out here just so I can see what I'm working with. And I'm going to move that there. That's fine. Duplicate. Right. I'm going to hold the shift key down and duplicate those two. Right. And then hold the shift key down and then move those two there. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select those four. Right click, duplicate. And again, hold the next four down. Duplicate. And duplicate those four again. Take the next four. Duplicate. The red line comes to show me I'm aligned. Duplicate. Ooh. Right click, duplicate the two layers that I've selected. Highlight. And then that is that. So I'm quite happy with that. Just want to merge all these here. But I do actually want to keep one of the hearts. So I'm going to duplicate that, duplicate that layer, and I'm actually going to bring it all the way down. So hang on. Let me just get rid of that. So I'm going to bring it all the way down, a bit there. Then I'm going to merge all these layers here. Merge layers. I'm going to take that one part down there so it's not in the way. Okay, now what I need to do before I actually create a pattern is do an offset because it might offset some of my hearts because I didn't want to cross it out. In fact, I might get away with actually moving things right in the corner. So if I just move that right in the corner, what I can now do is if I go to filter, other and offset I can actually see where things are but it's okay as long as it's wrap around I can maneuver things so I can maneuver this back up here and then I can change things so it's horizontal and it's in between so that is what we want now I'm actually quite happy with that and I don't need the pink hearts anymore because I don't need to put them in so I'm going to click OK. I'm now going to go Edit, Define New, Define Pattern. And then I'm going to go and create a new cover. So I'm going to go File, New. I'm going to call it Cover. I'm only going to do 6x9. I know 6x9 is not the correct 
um, canvas size, it would be six, one, two, five, if it's not a double spread. I just wanted to do and nine, two, five. So that's the right size, transparent, create. So I've got the right for a six by nine notebook, only the front cover. And then if I go layer and I go um, new layer fill, I can do pattern fill. So there's all these inbuilt patterns, but this is the one we've just created. So that's there. It's slightly off kilter, but it's okay because all you need to do is you can move these X and Ys. So I can just move that across and that has given me a nice thing. And I can also make the size bigger or I can make it smaller, which I don't want. As you can see, I would have had to put an extra heart in, but that would have been cropped out. So that's why I didn't do that. You can put them in and they often don't crop out. So if there's like a wrap around, so I prefer to get a bigger size and then do that off filter sort of thing. So, so that is how you can separate your different patterns. Yes, it takes work. You can also do it in PowerPoint and you can do it in other uh, graphics packages like Photoshop and Affinity Designer and I will be creating some videos to show you how to do that in all of those but this is the one where you can actually get it so that it is 300 dpi and I'm going to prove that by exporting this so I'm going to go file and I'm going to export it as a pdf and then I'm going to save that and I'm in Adobe Acrobat and what I've done here is one, when you're inside Adobe Acrobat, if you go print production, now this is only if you've got pro. So if you click on it on output preview and then you choose separation, but drop it down to object inspector and then just click it anywhere and it'll tell you that it's 300 DPI. Also, if we click anywhere or you can actually see that that is not pixelated, it's not blurred or anything like that. Whereas if you just took the JPEG and stretched it and split it that way, you would have pixelation. So yes, it's took a bit of work. So the simplest thing is if that's the pack patterns you're getting and you don't want to do any work, go and select something else. <laughs> That's usually the simplest thing, but this is just to show you how to do it if you want to do it. And like I say, if you create an account, you can actually save your settings and you can keep coming back to that pattern that you have created. Or you could simply just save that as a PSD or better yet, save the one that is 12 by 12 and save that as a PSD file so that you can go in again and use it. So if you go PSD here, save it in your own area that you can go and create more patterns from it. So I hope that has helped. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Also check out my video on how to fill an image with a pattern. So while you're here, why don't you check out my video on how to fill an image with a pattern. And don't forget to also check out my video about copy this picture.